During presidential elections, billions are spent by people trying to win. That's why politicians say we need campaign finance reform to regulate all that money. Well, we've got it. So how's that working out? Senator John McCain says he's a problem solver. I fought to get million dollar checks out of our elections. I've he's proud of McCain Feingold. And the bill is passed. The law which promised to curb the influence of big money on politics. The problem can be cured to a large degree by the provisions in this bill. Before McCain find gold, 98% of congressional incumbents were being reelected. With money playing a lesser role, said McCain, challengers will have a better chance. Stand up and fight. People like the idea of campaign finance reform. But campaign finance laws, like all of government's laws, are subject to a still more powerful law, the law of unintended consequences. How are you? I'm Dr. Ada Fisher. In the last couple elections, Ada Fisher, a retired doctor, ran for Congress in North Carolina. Time to get a doctor in the house. Vote for me. She ran on a shoestring, campaigning out of her own car. Let me get your card here. Making her own signs and buttons. For staff, she relied exclusively on volunteers. We didn't have any money to pay anybody. A recent college graduate volunteered to be her campaign treasurer. It was supposed to be fun, educational. But then they came up against campaign finance laws. This big book is the FEC rules. The book is close to 500 pages of small print double columns. That's typical of Washington's rules. And just how long is 500 pages of federal fine print? Let's find out. We taped them together. And here we are at Giant Stadium. How far will it go? It spanned the whole field and halfway back. No wonder Fisher and her young treasurer had trouble wrestling with all that legalese and filed some reports late. We get a notice we're being fined for failure to file. Nearly $10,000. They then decide that they want to hold a candidate and a treasurer personally liable. That's a great way to get volunteers out, tell them if they fail to file a form on time, they're personally liable for, for fines and penalties. And it's just a classic example of the way in which the law benefits insiders. Brad Smith knows all about cases like Fisher's. He was chairman of the Federal Election Commission when it first fined Fisher. And yet... You know, he, he hates campaign finance reform. Bradley Smith does. Smith does. The ex-chairman of the commission thinks campaign finance reform is a disaster. What we've done is we've created a system in which it's harder and harder to engage in real grassroots activity. That's what these laws are in the real life practice. Thank you. Senator McCain wouldn't talk to us about campaign finance, so I talked to these people whose organizations support campaign finance laws. Her group was once headed by McCain, and the McCain campaign's lawyer founded his. We have areas of law that are complex. No kidding, says Becky Cornwell. I have not really understood what I've been doing, which makes me sound stupid, but I'm not. <laughs> All she did was oppose a ballot measure, which would have allowed a Denver, Colorado suburb to annex her little town. She and some neighbors printed signs and T-shirts and gathered signatures for a petition. I just volunteered to walk around and talk to neighbors. But today's campaign finance laws go well beyond national elections. Now state laws cover things like local ballot measures. And under Colorado's rules, the fact that Becky's group exercised their free speech was enough for their political opponents to slap them with a lawsuit because they didn't register as an issue committee and report all their expenses. The lawsuit was used in an effort to shut us up about the annexation. They wanted to scare us enough and clobber us with these laws so that we wouldn't talk about it anymore. That's the problem. Campaign finance rules have become a tool that insiders use to silence their opponents. These people are printing t-shirts and yard signs and they're in trouble? That law was passed by the voters of the state of Colorado, so I think it to some degree reflects voter sentiment. They're paying more on legal fees than they paid on the campaign. Well, and I think that it's I think it's great that that they're trying to express their views, but there are rules on the books. It's very simple. You go on their websites and check it out. It's very simple. It's pretty simple. Would you fill it out? Sure. Here's that simple form. Excellent. You have a pen? But this is the instruction manual. <laughs> this is this is really good. I'm happy to see that the state of Colorado is doing this much to help people understand and comply with their campaign finance laws. Can we tape you doing it now? I have plans for the evening. I'm for, I, actually, I have, you know, I'm late, I think. None of them would complete all the forms that day. I, I, because it's a, 
it's a setup. Washington lawyer Paul Ryan did send in the properly filled out forms a week later. I do this stuff for a living, though. I don't know if I'm a, an appropriate sample. This okay. economics professor runs tests with a better sample. This is going to be a role-playing exercise. He has educated people try to fill out forms like Colorado's. You know, I wasn't trying to throw any curveballs here, but just to see if people can follow the instructions. 2020 paid each of these people $20 to give it a try, and 20 more if they completed the forms correctly. The result? Uh, no one got them all right. Before this group, he tested another 200 people. Everyone violated the law. A regular citizen cannot read this legalese. I'd rather just not get involved in the political process if I have to go through the nonsense that I had to go through today. That's how Becky and her neighbors feel, even though they won their anti-annexation fight. It'd be very difficult to throw yourself in front of that bus again. Did the campaign finance bus at least flatten the fat cats, too? No. Barack Obama backed out of public financing so he could keep attending $20,000 a plate fundraiser. John McCain himself has skirted his own donation limits. And the big money that was banned by McCain Fine Gold and this ream of rules, well, it's still in the game. Instead of going to candidates or parties, now it goes to outside groups which bankroll attack ads like these. Will Obama really raise taxes on tens of thousands of middle-class workers? Yes, we can. As Alaska governor, Palin promotes the vicious aerial killing of wolves. Even the reformers admit McCain's reforms didn't stop big money. It's like squeezing a, a balloon. You just squeeze down somewhere and it pops up somewhere else. So then else. why do we need these rules? It, it addressed a specific problem, and then you get new problems. You can't take money out of politics. As long as you've got $3 trillion being taxed and spent by the federal government, people are going to want to get control of that. Did reform at least make elections more competitive? No, again. Just as many congressional incumbents are being reelected now as were during the Watergate era. The Ada Fishers of the world, she lost both times she ran for Congress. They've learned that challenging the political class is hard to do. Try running for North Carolina House. The system is rigged for incumbents and against challenges because incumbents already know the game. They have gamed the game to win. So you hate to put it bluntly, but you're screwed.